Hello, my friends. I'm so excited to have a table full of notebooks here. And this is one of my favorite videos to record every month and we missed it in May. So I'm very excited to talk about notebooks. Let's get into it. Okay, so it's so much fun every month to pull out all the notebooks that I'm using or thinking of using and just daydream about all the fun things that I can do with them as well as truly how they enhance my life, make me happier, make me more productive, keep records of things that I love. I do have an old video that I did several years ago that was all about like something 30 plus ideas of how to fill up your notebooks. So if you want to check that out, I will link that for you down below, especially if you're new here. Welcome to the Heart Breathings Notebook Challenge. This is a monthly just kind of chat where we get together, talk about how I'm using my notebooks, ideas for my notebooks, as well as an encouragement for you if you are a notebook hoarder like so many of us to just go ahead and grab one of those notebooks that you've been too afraid to write in because you don't want to mess it up and just start using it. Take notes in it, make a planner out of it, script, keep an evidence journal. We're going to talk about all the different ways that you can use your notebooks or that I'm using mine. And I would love for you to tell me how you're using yours. So in the comments down below, let me know how you're currently using your notebooks. What brand is your favorite? And of course, over on Instagram, you can tag me at heart breathings or use the hashtag HB notebook challenge. So I actually have not been as religiously using my notebooks over the past month or two as I usually do because I have been busy. That's why we also missed the May notebook challenge because I just did not have time. And so I've been a little slower on videos, but I am getting ready for summer. Please let me know in the comments if you're ready for summer too. And for those of you, our friends in the Southern Hemisphere, are you excited for winter? Do you like that time of year or do you miss summer? I'm sure you don't miss summer in Texas because it is going to be very hot here, but the kids are home, they're out of school, and I'm very excited for the summertime. And I think I'm actually going to start planning a little bit earlier for my Q3 is coming up. We've got HB90 opens today. So if you want to come join us, the link for that will be in the description. I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end of this video, but I know I've been chattering. So let's go ahead and get started talking about notebooks. And I'll start with some lovely Erin Condren and May designs that I have here on the table. Actually, we'll start with this May designs because it's very quick. So I mentioned before, this is a May Designs composition notebook. I think this is what they call their large notebook. It's something like seven by nine. I think it's right around the same size as this Erin Condren planner. Yeah, so this is a seven by nine. You can choose between lots and lots of different covers. They're not quite cardstock. They're just kind of a heavier linen style paper, but they're very flexible kind of notebooks. And I've had this one for a very long time. And the only complaint that I would have about these notebooks is, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but it just picks up every little stain because it's not coated or anything. But then again, it's also stays flexible. So this is my scripting journal, which is basically a practice of sitting down every day and journaling about the future as if it were the present. So just journaling every day about my goals and saying, oh, I'm so happy that this thing happened, even though it hasn't yet happened, if that makes sense, it's kind of a manifestation practice. And it really keeps me present on the goals that I'm working toward. I have a spread here at the beginning, which I of course will blur out because it's a little bit more private, but you can kind of see the gist of it through the blur that I have some goals for my heart breathings channel for broken chapter society, which is my upcoming room subscription, finishing disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, getting my health in order. I have all of these goals and plans. And so every day I sit down and journal sort of as if I'm journaling from the future about those things having already happened. And really it's just a way of getting my emotions into a place of believing that it's possible and actually even getting my nervous system into a place where I feel safe to achieve those goals. So if you're somebody who deep down is afraid of success or afraid of failure or afraid of kind of up leveling or moving into a new level of yourself or your life or your personal growth, and that doesn't feel safe to move out of your comfort zone, scripting or journaling as if you've already reached that milestone can be super helpful just to get your mind into a place where it's like, oh, in your subconscious, you've already achieved this and it's super safe and it's fine for you to get that. That can help you push past fears of 
publishing that book. If you script it every day, things like it was so much fun to finish my novel and to put it out. And I'm so excited that I had five sales today. That kind of thing kind of gets your subconscious ready to experience those things. So anyway, I believe in that. I enjoy it. You could also use something like this as more of a prayer journal. If you're more of a prayer kind of person, sometimes I feel like the scripts become a little bit like prayer for me and meditation. So I do this every morning and I have kept it up every single day for 61, 62. Today is 62 days. So I'm going to keep this going until the end of this notebook, which will be 90 days. I also have some new Erin Condren planners. So you guys know I have been obsessed with Erin Condren for years, a decade at this point. I don't know how long I've been using Erin Condren, I think actually since about 2016 or 2015. So we're getting close to a decade of Erin Condren. And I have kind of gotten obsessed lately with Franken planning them, which means taking a tool like this one. This is kind of my new tool that I purchased from Amazon. It is quite heavy and I don't know that I really recommend it, but I was using like a wire like jewelry cutters or needle nose pliers type things to do this. And it would mess up the end of the coil because in order to, let me see if I can find my other one. So in order to take these apart and take the coil off and then mix up the pages or combine two planners or planners in a notebook and then put it back, you basically have to grab the end of this thing and pull it out. So then you can make it straight so that you can uncoil it. And I don't know how well this will show up right now, but you can kind of see this beautiful coil, which they don't even have this year. And I'm very sad about it is a little bit crunched up from that needle nose plier. So I thought, well, let me go on Amazon and see if I can find something. What I need to do is email the team at Erin Condren and be like, what do they use in the warehouse to make sure that these get done properly? So I bought this, which I can't even tell you the brand. It just says soft touch. And like I said, it's super heavy and a little bit unwieldy. And because it's not needle nose, it's a little more difficult to kind of get in there. But I also really struggled with it because it wasn't as precise at bending, I think, because it's not the needle nose. So again, not sure I really recommend that just yet, but I did sit in bed last night and I took apart my new Daily Duo canvas. So I didn't even tell you guys, I didn't even do a full haul because I've been so busy. But one of my launch day orders from Erin Condren is the Canvas Daily Duo Planner. And I know technically this is a planner and not a notebook, but we talk about both here on our notebook challenge because I like to use my planners as notebooks uh, in a similar kind of way. They're just notebooks with a monthly spread. And so we've got the daily duo here, but if you know, it doesn't actually start until July, but I am starting a brand new round of what I call six months for life. And by the way, if you haven't seen the update on the daily duo, you have not only they got rid of the monthly calendar that used to be on every page. So this is more usable space and the actual canvas version is so minimal. It's really, really beautiful. You can decorate this all you want with stickers, or you could just go with black pen. Then you've got a full day for Saturday and Sunday. And then you also have a note page between as well as a week in review. And this is the main reason I wanted to try out the planner just for curiosity and trying and testing things out because I really miss not having a weekly and a daily. So like my HB 90 planner has a weekly and a daily page and what monthly, weekly, daily, and the daily duo historically has had no weekly page. So now we get a weekly page with a few lines and a four box checklist. So that is really nice. I'm excited to try that out. It comes right before every Monday of the week. And so I've got that, but because like I said, it didn't start until July and I wanted to start in June, you guys know that I have an entire closet full of notebooks. And so I actually went in and found a planner that I had from 2022 that was from this mid-century circles design. And I pulled it apart as well as this, as well as some pages I had from a previous notebook that I had and Franken planned it. So I will be doing, if you want to see it, let me know in the comments, a mid-year planner lineup where I'll show you all the actual planners that I'm using, but I'm still going to talk about it a little bit here. So I have that I took the little vellum page from the mid-century circles design. This is the page from the July to December 
canvas. So I'm probably going to wipe that out or I'll just leave it. Six months for life is really just a thing I talk about over on my Sarah Cannon YouTube channel. Sometimes if you are interested in it, I did create a little workbook for it and you can come hear more about it. I'll link that for you down below as well. Would love to have you subscribe to my second channel if you would like to. So it's really a just something I do for myself where I take six months to focus on some kind of personal growth in my life. So I have obviously the HB90 system, which is the main way that I do my planning. And again, HB90 is runs in a boot camp. You can either get the planner to figure out the system. You can watch my Kanban board playlist here to get an idea for it. But if you want to really revolutionize the way you plan and have a clear laid out system for 90 days where you can say, okay, this is exactly what I'm doing and let go of all the overwhelm and all the things that you don't actually have time for and make sure that you're creating a plan that really fits into the available time you have. So you can make the most of that time and really start to see your dreams and your goals come true rather than just spinning your wheels all the time or feeling overwhelmed all the time or feeling behind all the time. I highly recommend you come join us. It opened today. The kickoff call is June 16th. There have been over 4,000 people have taken this class so far, and it has been transformational for so many people. And it's really a passion of mine. I would love to have you in there. But as part of my HB90 system, I always have three goals. And I have one goal for my writing, one goal for this Heart Breathing's YouTube channel and classes, and then one goal for my personal growth and kind of like admin type stuff. So like life admin, cleaning up my house, organizing things, and this six months, I am going to be focused on my health. So I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And with the busyness and stress of the past few years, I really have started to see a lot of my symptoms getting worse and worse. And the older I get, the more scary that becomes. If you have PCOS, then you know what I'm talking about. And I just really want to put a focus on my health. And so the next six months, I'm going to do that. And I didn't want to wait until July to start a brand new six months in terms of HB90. So I'm going to be planning my HB90 here in June and I'll share that with you. I'll probably call it my summer reset routine coming up and I'm just going to focus on life until November and I'll kind of just pull that into my HB90 plan. And then in December, hopefully I'll just be able to continue the habits that I created. But anyway, I know I'm being super talky today, but I missed you guys. <laughs> so I have the 2024, 2025 planner part here. And then I added just four or five little notebook pages here. And this is where I'm going to journal about what I want to accomplish and what my starting point is for, for six months for life. And here in this little six boxes, I am actually going to put now in the regular year long planners, this would have 12 boxes, but because the daily duo split into six months and six months, there's only six. So here is where I'm going to put a little photo and I'm going to journal a little bit about what the state of my habits are. So one of the main things is like supplements, moving my body, getting better sleep, um, reducing my stress. Those are some of the main things. So I'm going to give myself kind of a, a score. So something similar to like Moxie life or level 10 life, where you say on a scale of one to 10, how am I doing with this area of my life? I'm going to give myself a score and I'll keep writing on that. So I'll share that with you as the months progress. I, this is my new Franken planner notebook slash planner. I mostly on these daily pages, I'm going to be tracking like how I'm feeling, what I was eating for the day, whether I exercise for the day, and then this will be journaling. So that's where it kind of becomes like a notebook as well is that I'm keeping these journaling. I'm keeping records of these things in here. So that's the first one. Another notebook that I use all the time and the monthly notebooks I, or monthly planners, I don't think have come out yet from Erin Condren, but I adore their monthly planners. And I tried for a little while to say, I'm not going to use a monthly planner. I'm just going to use a regular notebook, or I'm just going to try to do this only in Notion. And that didn't really work for me. So this year I have been, again, using the big, the larger, I don't even know if that's showing up in the whole frame, but it's this huge, basically like eight and a half by 11, if not slightly bigger planner that is just the monthly planner. And this of course comes in both the seven by nine and the larger one. And I have been pretty consistently, there are still a few pages in here. So some places where I didn't use it, but I've been 
using this for my content calendar and for my video uh, outlines and things like that. So I have been keeping track of all of that in here and I really enjoy it because what I'll do is I will have this open on my desk when I'm doing a video so that I can use that as my outline and that works fine. And so this is basically other than, like I said, look at this, the month of May got almost nothing in it because <laughs> Oh, because I was so busy, but we're back to content in June and I'm excited for all the new content uh, about productivity and my new Ream subscription and launching my new book, which is almost finished. So lots of good stuff there, but this is almost done. And you can see I've used a lot of the pages in this and I have really enjoyed it. But are we going to switch things up for the next part of the year? Yes, we are. So I actually, when they had their buy one, get one half off notebook sale, I got two large notebooks. So how cute is this cover, y'all? I love this cover. I have it in the seven by nine now and the other. And it says 2024 in the back. So I feel like this might be a limited design but it has cherries on it. I love it. So this is the take note priorities and notes new layout, which has those same kind of six boxes that we saw before with just a notes page. So I'm going to use this for some of my outlining and tracking. And then I also just got a plain lined notebook. So this is just the classic lined. And I do love that. What I don't love you guys is why are they putting this barcode here? It's right in the front of this. I hate this. Why are they doing this? Ah, and I don't use the word hate very often, but I just don't understand why they're putting this barcode in the front. Like if anything, just put it in the back or put it on the back of one of the pages. But I hate that they've got this in the front. Please let me know if you feel the same way and I will pass that on to the team. Um, but anyway, I am going to be Franken planning those two notebooks with this gorgeous beauty right here. I'm going to stand up real quick and see. Yeah, you guys can see it. It's just there's a glare because I need lights and it looks like it's about to storm outside. Look at this coil, though. How beautiful. So this is the sunset coil. I almost didn't get it because I don't like the color orange a lot and it has this whole sort of orange, but I tell you, it kind of almost is like more like copper. It's very pretty and it looks so good with this Eta V cover for the Evolve design. I really do like it. So I'm glad I got it. So you can see this was last year's multicolor coil and now you've got this new sunrise coil and I do like it. Although this one I like better because these are my favorite colors, but this is a teacher lesson planner and they changed the layout this year. So I don't know if I'll use the communication log and some of these other pages, but like this is so pretty and I just love the new design this year. So you've got some graph pages and you've got some like dates to remember some blank pages and then you have the monthly spread. But what they've changed is on the weekly spread for the teacher planner. It's, I think you can get it either way. I think you have two options, correct me if I'm wrong, but it used to be that you would have the dates along the side and it would just say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And there was no Saturday, Sunday because it's a teacher planner. But I think the Erin Condren team really was listening and watching us on YouTube where a lot of us would white that out and use the five things as five categories and then create Monday through Sunday across the top where you're supposed to be putting the subjects. So they have given us that the Saturday and Sunday are just two long columns for maybe more of a to-do list. Whereas this, uh, has six sections for each day of the regular week. And I'm so excited for this because I started thinking my content calendar for heart breathings is really focused on YouTube when it comes to the, the notebook that I use but I have wanted for years to be able to use a layout like this that I can put my reels and other types of content creation into here. I do have it in Notion. You guys saw me set that up in Notion, but I do struggle to use digital tools exclusively. I have my content calendar in Notion, but this is where I work best when it comes to brainstorming. So I brainstorm in here, then I put it into Notion so that Renee and anyone else who's working with me can see what I'm doing. But for me, I don't brainstorm well digitally. I just need to do it on paper. So I'm very excited to try this out, but I don't want to lose all of the notes pages that I use for all my outlines. So I'm going to Frankenplan it. So I will share 
that process with you all if you'd like to see it. But I'm basically going to be taking these two notebooks and creating a six month planner instead of a year long planner for the rest of the year in here starting in July. Oh my goodness. I start talking and then I'm like, how are we 20 minutes into this video already? I don't know. So just a quick kind of look and see this one doesn't have a barcode and that looks so much nicer, right? <laughs> so this is their meeting notebook that I bought last year and I haven't used it. I mean, I, I use it every week, but I haven't used it up. There's a lot of pages in here, but I have been using this one pretty regularly for my accelerate meetings and other just sort of meeting up with people to talk about different things um, regarding my career and other things like that. And I think it's probably we'll say maybe a third or quarter of the way through. And I've really been enjoying it. So I do like this. If you take a lot of meetings and you want to keep all your notes in one place, I highly recommend this little notebook. Then I won't go as deep into it because I know we're getting late, but I'm also going to do a Franken plan because this monthly notebook hybrid that I created last, at the, well, last year or towards the beginning of this year, that is my Sarah Cannon brainstorm content calendar. This is where I brainstorm my um, coffee chats, my Twitch streams, any other types of promotions and other things that are going on with Sarah Cannon. And I use this, this is basically a monthly notebook, right? So, or a monthly planner, but I did Franken plan it. And I've tried putting in these vertical layouts, like from an older planner so that I could say when, and get it like a view of my week and say, when are the different things going up? But I didn't use this as much as I thought I would, but I have some ideas for how I'm going to tweak that in the future. But I did use almost all of these pages. So this is probably one of the main notebooks that I've just used almost every single day. But you can see the pages I didn't use were the vertical spread and the checklists. I didn't use these checklists like I thought I would. So I won't be putting those in the next version of this planner. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. And when you compare it to like the new, let's see, that's March. The new design. I did see uh, like a very small handful of people say they're too similar and they wish they had done something completely different, but I am purely happy with this. <laughs> I love them both and I'm so happy they stuck with Etta V this year. So anyway, it's all personal preference and opinion, but every time I look at it, it makes me happy. So I took notes from different uh, meetings, from different ideas, different panels and things that I went to, subscription for authors. I also had these little uh, dividers in here, but you can see I have like very few pages. I have only a handful of pages left in this. And I have a feeling by the end of June, this will all be used. I have just a few pages left of it. So it's time almost to take this and create a new one. So I'm going to take what I learned from this one and I'm going to be creating a new six month planner, or I might actually do a three month planner, a quarterly planner and try that out. And I know that it's so extra to be taking these apart and creating my own planners, but it brings me so much joy. And as you can see from the use that I get out of them, it is very functional for me. So I have the compact vertical. This is the one that Erin Condren team sent me for free to review this year. And I'm so excited to use this layout because I'm going to be starting my Ream subscription. So Ream reamstories.com is a new ish platform. It's only been around for a little over a year where you, it's basically like a Patreon where people can sign up for monthly, like monthly subscription to your stuff, but it's created for authors specifically. And I'm going to do more videos on this for those of you that are interested in maybe starting your own ream or supporting other authors on ream. But it's a way for us to basically give people early access to build more community and to be paid every single month for our work rather than like you write a book and three years later you get some money. <laughs> um, but I am ridiculously excited about this. And as soon as Disappearance of Vanessa Shaw is published or is up on pre-order, I'm going to be launching my Ream. You guys are welcome to already come and follow me over there. There will be a Hardee's or Heart Breathings tier included in that for those of you that even if you don't want to read my stories necessarily, want to do more plan with me's or hang out with me more over there, there will be a section of that ream. I might someday start my own separate subscription for heart breathings, but for now it's just more than I could handle. So if you're thinking you might want to come join me over there, it's called the Broken Chapter Society. I will put that link down below for you. 
but there's going to be a lot more work to do on a weekly basis for my stories because I'm going to be publishing a story ongoing each week, kind of like what I did when I published The Witch's Key. I'll be reading it out loud and I'll be writing it as I go. And I'm so excited for this because as many of you know, it has taken me several years to get my latest book out because it is difficult to balance all the different things that I've been doing and the creativity with a particularly complex book has just been a longer process, but I am not giving up on myself. I am keeping going and I'm in the final edits of that. And I had hoped to be able to announce a release date yet, but we went to Raleigh and I didn't get to do that, but it's coming here in the month of June in terms of a release date. So I'm excited for that, but I think this will be fun to, and useful as a spread to be able to show uh, what I'm doing each day of the week for Ream specifically. What am I writing? What am I posting over there? What's going up on my newsletter? What are the like live streams and other things? So this will become um, sort of an updated version of this monthly planner, but with more structure to it so that I can keep track of all those tasks. So anyway, I did, when I reviewed this planner, do just a quick little example spread. So you can kind of see how it could potentially look. And a lot of people said that you found that helpful just to see kind of a sample spread. So anyway, I'll be taking this apart and I will be putting a Franken planner with this vertical layout from the canvas design, which I had bought to do memory keeping this year and I just simply haven't had time. So I don't want this planner to go to waste. So I'm gonna be using this vertical spread combined with the compact vertical and some note pages. So. I will share that with you. Let me know in the comments if you would rather see a full setup of those two planner notebook hybrids, or if you'd rather just see them like during a notebook challenge like this or in my mid-year planner lineup, or if you actually wanna see the process of setting them up, let me know. Okay, one more Erin Condren thing, and then we will move on. I have, let's see, we're gonna just pull all these things out. I have this one, which is a notebook, set of notebooks. It's actually multiple notebooks that I pulled together and put on a regular planner coil because since I am always pulling planners apart and notebooks apart, I have a collection of coils sitting in my uh, drawer. And so I used that to combine, I think, three separate notebooks into one. It might just be two, two or three. And I was planning to use this and segment it out for things like webinars, learning, craft books that I'm reading, things like that. And it, I'll tell you what happened is in my brain, you know, for some of us that end up being like, oh, you know what? I don't want to mess up that notebook. That's what happened to me with this because I, I set this up and then because I might be working through a book here, a webinar here, a course over here, I wasn't sure how many pages I needed to finish that course. So then I was afraid I was going to end up with extra pages in between and I couldn't figure out exactly how to segment it out. And so I just didn't use it at all. And that made me sad. So this one, I need to assign something specific. Maybe I'll put this to be just craft things that I'm learning because I only do one craft book, writing craft book at a time. But I set this up for the Go Wild conference and I just loved, thought it was so cute and I really enjoyed setting it up. And I realized I do have multiple of these petite planners that I've collected over the years from warehouse sales and other things like that, that I just haven't really used. I have a few like this where I've like started to put some routines and things in and then didn't. So this is also a reminder that if you have notebooks that you liked, that you only used a few pages, you can give those notebooks new life. All you have to do is put some cute washi tape here and it becomes the beginning of the journal and nobody knows that it was like that and it's totally fine. So that's what I'm gonna do with some of these. I have, like I said, a whole collection of various lined notebooks from Erin Condren's Petite Planners that I think some of these are all the way back from when they first started Petite Planners. We've got Layers Design, Kaleidoscope Design, Mid-Century Circles, Hello Kitties, lots of designs here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign each one of these notebooks for anything that I'm learning about. So right now I've been on a kick. I'm high learner not surprising to anybody. So I'm always learning something. I'm always working through some kind of course or webinar or anything like that. And so I've got some webinars on Instagram growth. I have some webinars on like 
finances and investments. I have some webinars that I've been listening to on various types of personal growth and manifestation, and I don't want to put them all, it turns, into one notebook. I thought I would, but I don't. So I'm going to just say, well, this one will be my Instagram learning one, and this one will be my finances one, and I'll just put them all inside this cute little petite planner cover, and we'll see how that goes for the next month or so and see if that is actually helpful to me or not. I also, when I was looking through which planners I had, realized that I had this cute little summer one that had come in one of the summer surprise boxes. It's a little petite planner summer journal, and I never used this. And I was thinking, gosh, I should fill this out since I didn't do all my memory keeping that I had hoped to do this year because of timing. Maybe I can keep up with something a little better this summer because look at this little place where you can put pictures. I also just purchased a little Canon Ivy. They had these on sale, I think, at Best Buy. Yeah, I got this at Best Buy. They had this like $50 off on sale over the Memorial Day weekend. And I do have like whatever the HP one is, but it's starting to have connection issues. It's really old. It traveled with me and it just wasn't working great. So I decided to grab the little Ivy and here's kind of a little example of some of the picture quality from the week my kids got out of school and the all these are stickers so you can just pull the backing off and this is going to be bigger than one of these but what I could do is do a collage or something and cut them in half and do one per day or I could do like this and cut them in half there's lots of ways you could cut these up and put them as little stickers in these little memory sections so I'm thinking I'm going to try that out for summer the next notebook that I'm going to show you is one that so many people tagged me in and said guess we're going to see this in a future notebook challenge so if you called it you can put a cherry in the comments Thank you so much for tagging me with this notebook because I love it. This is a coach notebook. It is a leather cherry. It has this leather strap here as well. And you can see the little coach here. It does not sadly have pockets like I like to set up. For some reason, a lot of the designer like Louis Vuitton and others, maybe they just like the simple simplicity. This is classier than like putting a bunch of, I mean, you know, this I wouldn't say is exactly classy, but it's cute and I love it. But a lot of the higher end notebooks just don't have pockets, which is fine, but I do love the pockets. So I have, it came with its own notebook. It says coach, but it's O-ring binding or wire O and the paper actually seems to be pretty good. Actually, it has a little horse and carriage on the pages or like little things every once in a while to kind of tell you about the coach brand which is nice and i probably still will use this notebook eventually but this is my least favorite binding and so i'm not going to use that one it's a5 so any a5 can fit inside so i'm just going to take an a5 stalogy that i had and i have been putting this together with a membership that i'm in called to be magnetic which is basically kind of like a neuroplasticity and manifestation monthly subscription. And so I'm going to be keeping track of all of the work that I do with that subscription here. So my learner is on like learner, personal development, personal growth is on high alert these days. It's bringing me a lot of joy. It feels like self-care to just continue to work on improving myself, gaining knowledge. And I just love it. So how cute is this? I also got a camera bag, uh, that, like crossbody bag that matches this. And it's so pretty, but I don't actually have it yet because it was like, okay, we're going to buy it. So it doesn't sell out, but then we're going to wait and it will be like a Christmas present or something. So I'll get that later this year. It's also, since I'm almost done with Vanessa Shaw, which I know I have been saying for a long time, but this has been the book that for me has felt like, oh, it's almost there. And then the second I figure out a twist, something else is broken. And because there's so many moving parts, it has been such a challenging book to write. And so at this point, I have finished act one, complete, complete, like done, doesn't need any more edits from me until after I get it to the editor and beta readers. And I'm partway through act two. So if we get there, hopefully 
uh, once it's off to beta readers, I'll be able to announce a pre-order and release date. So I'm getting very excited as I near the end of this epically long project for me. It has never taken me this long to write a book before. Um, and I actually haven't, I haven't had a new book out in just under three years, but I haven't been working on this book for those three years. I have only been working on this book for about what, a year and a half. Um, I think I started it back again for Nano, um, a, yeah, about a year and a half ago. So, but it, it has been quite the journey. So two years to a year and a half, I've been working on this book. And once it's done, I'm going to be moving back to my, uh, book 12, which is 40,000 words finished, which is the final book of my shadow demon saga. And I made it probably about a third of the way through the book and then switched projects. Now I'm kind of doubting if that was the right choice, but we keep moving forward and we trust who we are at the time. Um, but anyway, I'm also going to be writing a side story called a mirror of shadows, which is for that ream subscription. So I have been using the Sterling ink planner here, and I have honestly have a lot of pages left. So I don't think I'll fill this all the way in June, but I need to go looking for my Sterling Inc. six month that starts in July so I can start setting that up. And I'm probably going to set it up to look just like this because I have really loved the brightness of the polka dot design and the pink. And so I've got that. This is an Aura Estelle cover with the B6 Sterling Inc. Common Planner half year. But I have another one to set up and I'm going to be setting this up hopefully for July's notebook challenge. This is another Aura Estelle. This is the more cloud design. Oh, there goes the rain. It's starting to rain. Is it getting darker on my screen? I wonder. Um, so this is the Aura Estelle cloud design. And I have been sort of collecting over the past few weeks, just little things as I find them or as I purchase them that like there's a little... Uh, little rainbows and some of my book covers and I've got various other little things like this night mode sticker this mama sticker a little bat there some hello kitties I really love this one that says main character energy and then I have this older Alice in Wonderland one which through the looking glass my story is called a mirror of shadows where she will be actually passing through a portal of a mirror. So I've got little things like that, that I really have been collecting to decorate the front of this, as well as I have this cover from, I think, Salty Katie Co. And just a fresh B6 Stalogy. So I know many of you have asked to see the setup of this when I start talking about my serialized story. The biggest question for me with my notebooks right now, though, is... I have been using this B6 Stalogy for the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw, and I have used it all the way through. It's I only have a handful of pages in the back for that book. A Mirror of Shadows is going to be ongoing, multiple seasons, kind of like a television show with lots of episodes. And so I think I'm going to need this whole notebook. I don't want to split it in half for book 12. So I might be setting up two Stalogies, one for... A Mirror of Shadows and one for book 12 of the Shadow Demon Saga. They're both set in the same world, but they are two different stories, two different sets of characters. So I think I'm going to set up two and use them both. But then I think I need a different B6 cover for it, or I might put it in my traveler's notebook. So we'll see kind of how that goes, but I'm going to share that setup with you all coming soon. Just to mention it, because many of you did resonate with this idea, I am still going strong on my evidence notebook. So just to mention it, this is an evidence notebook, which basically is like when you are thinking that you want to accomplish something or you want to work on your confidence. And then someone says in a comment, oh my gosh, you seem so confident. That is evidence that I'm getting better at this. Or when someone notices something that is an alignment or I see a cherry that feels like it's a sign from the universe. I've been putting that in this little notebook and this goes with me in my purse everywhere. And I have been still enjoying that. Two other things real quick that I wanted to show you before we talk about the giveaways, which I have a special giveaway for you this month, is my friend Adrian, who I finally get to meet in person 
coming up at AnchorsCon. If you are going to be at AnchorsCon next weekend, by the way, please let me know. Send me an email, sarah at heartbreathings.com. We are going to do a Hardee's meetup. I just haven't found the time or place yet. So I want to see you there. I definitely want to hang out. I will be speaking on planning for success. There's also a digital conference for AnchorsCon. And if you use my code, sarah24, you can get $50 off. I highly, highly recommend this conference. If you can't come to the personal conference, if you're not coming here to Dallas next weekend, definitely think about joining the digital conference. It's some of the best speakers in the industry, and I know that you'll get so much out of it. It's one of the best conferences online, if not the best online conference there is out there for authors. I highly recommend it, and it's affordable. You can get 50 bucks off with my code, Sarah24. But I'll get to meet Adrian, and she just sent me her newest stickers, which are the HB90 stickers, but they're not paper, they're vinyl. So she sent me some details on it. It says Lux matte vinyl stickers for the HB90 method. These are super, super nice. So she's got like these little right laptops, double down day, which was happening today, tracking your time, writing, revisions, and some of the other like Kanban boards and other ones like that. Definitely check out Adrian's Procrasta Planner, etc. I will have her sticker shop linked below. Those stickers are now available. So thanks for sending those to me, Adrian. Um, so you've got AnchorsCon. We have the HB90 Bootcamp is open for enrollment. So come join us for that. Trust me when I say if you are looking for a plan that's going to actually work and help keep you motivated and will be clear because you've been feeling overwhelmed or you're just feeling like you're not making progress in your goals, this is the course for you. And it's not just for writers. It's for anyone who has goals they want to reach, whether it's homemaking, cooking, finances, getting your PhD, becoming a realtor, starting an Etsy shop, all of those things apply. Okay. Final things. Look how cute this Kindle is. I just wanted to show you these stickers because I got a clear cover for my Kindle Oasis and I got some super cute stickers from Illy Milly Designs as well as I think it's, um, oh, I can't remember, The Second Shop, Buy Me Books and Tell Me I'm Pretty. So cute, Eyes Latte. I love these. And uh, I also put a little pop socket on there to help hold it. It's super, super cute. I will link these sticker shops down below because they just, I love them. Love them. Before we get to the giveaways, let's talk about this month's diverse read, which I am so excited for. My friend Leslie Penelope has a new book coming out June 4th called Daughter of the Merciful Deep. And I have not been this excited for a book in a long time. So let's hear more about Leslie's book. So Leslie Penelope is actually one of the first authors that I ever featured in our diverse reads because I've been reading and loving her books for so long. And I'm excited to bring you another recommendation, which is her latest release comes out on June 4th called Daughter of the Merciful Deep. So we're going to take a look at this book. It is inspired by the idea of drowned towns. And if you head to Leslie's Instagram, you can hear a lot more about her inspiration for this novel. But let me read this for you. A woman journeys into a submerged world of gods and myth to save her home in this powerful historical fantasy that shines a light on the drowned black towns of the American South. I get chills just thinking about this. I cannot wait for this book. Our home began as all things do with a wish. Jane Edwards hasn't spoken since she was 11 years old when armed writers expelled her family from their hometown along with every other Black resident. Now, 12 years later, she's found a haven in the all-Black town of Awanasa, but the construction of a dam promises to wash her home under the waters of a new lake. Jane will do anything to save the community that sheltered her, so when a man with uncanny abilities arrives in town asking strange questions, she wonders if he might be the key. But as the stranger hints at gods and ancestral magic, Jane is captivated by a bigger mystery. She knows this man. Only the last time she saw him, he was dead, his body laid to rest in a rushing river. Who is the stranger and what is he really doing in Awanasa? To find those answers, Jane will journey into a sunken world, a land of capricious gods and unsung myths of salvation and dreams made real, but the floodwaters are rising. To gain the miracle she desires, Jane will have to find her voice again and finally face the trauma of the past. 
I love the cover, the blurb, like literally my arm has chills every time I think about this. I actually used to live near a drowned town in Nashville, um, but it's really an interesting concept and it is so, it's such a deep concept. And if you want to read an author who is just a master at world building, Leslie Penelope is your person. So let's look a little bit. If you look around her website, you can find out about her podcasts. So she has two podcasts, My Imaginary Friends and Ink and Magic with my friend Ines, which they went to college together and I adore them both. We write together in the mornings. Also, she has courses and resources for authors. She's going to be speaking at various conferences coming up. So if you want to check that out, her workshops and things like that. And of course, if you head to her about me, you can read all about Leslie. Basically, she is incredible. She went to Howard University. She was born in the Bronx and she is a filmmaker, but also a writer and she writes fantasy, paranormal romance, and I'm excited for anything that she writes. So definitely check out her books. I will have them linked below. And if you decide to read Daughter of the Merciful Deep, please let me know what you think. I cannot wait to read this book. Oh my gosh, doesn't that sound so good? You have to get it. You can pre-order it now, get it in a couple of days. I cannot wait. Congratulations. Leslie, you are such an amazing author and I cannot wait to read this one. For our notebook giveaway this month we have something a little special i'm sorry i had this one in the shop but this one is not up for grabs but it has cherries and i wanted to show you how cute it is it's a little binder and it has these little cherries and teddy bears and then it has these pages here i got this at a, a little shop in boston when i went to the subscriptions for author summit called teehee and it was so fun because it's a licensed sanrio store and i had so much fun shopping in there and it was extra fun because I met some of our Hardy's community at the subscription for authors summit and they took me out to this store and then we went to lunch and we had such a lovely time and I would love to hang out with these ladies anytime we get a chance. So what they did, which I thought was so very sweet is each of the three ladies that took me to the store picked out a notebook to give away to all of you. I didn't get Casey's before she left, so I'll pop a picture in here um, of each of these ladies with their notebooks. But how fun is that? Like totally unprompted by me, they just decided to buy notebooks for you guys, for the community from them. And that just made my heart just feel so full. So this cutie little notebook is 60 sheets. It is a little Hello Kitty notebook. Also, we have little apples and strawberries and hearts and other things here. This is from Caitlin and Caitlin Duncan is a thriller writer. She has been part of this community for a really long time. I adore her and it was so fun to get to spend time with her. So that is Caitlin's. And then Cassie Ray, who I also loved meeting this time around, bought this super cute Pachaco notebook that is in this cute little mint green. And I'm gonna leave them in the plastic for you so they don't get damaged. Casey bought you a super cute notebook as well. So I'm gonna pop that on the screen and she will send it directly to you when we choose a winner. So we're gonna choose three winners this month and I cannot wait to share these with you all. So if you wanna enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel and comment down below. You can just comment a cherry emoji if you'd like, or you can actually leave a comment and let me know how you're using your notebooks or what you are thinking for your mid-year planner lineup. Any comment will count and I will ship these anywhere that I can ship legally from the United States. So open internationally. Um, and we'll give away three notebooks this month. All right, I super love you all. Don't forget to come join us in the HB90 Bootcamp. This is such an amazing, not just an amazing course that truly comes from my own desperation years ago to reach my goals. I was so stuck and wasn't sure that I was ever gonna start moving forward again. And I have taken that sort of depression and fear and anxiety and overwhelm and turned it into this life that I have now where I am not perfect. Everything doesn't go according to plan and you don't have to be perfect. Life doesn't require us to be perfect. Productivity doesn't require us to be perfect. It's just a matter of how do I take action every day towards my goals and start to see step by step, little by little, my dreams coming true, but not in a way that feels toxic and not in a way that feels like I have to focus on hustle and discipline but rather in a way that meets me where I am and says, here's what I'm capable of and I'm gonna start moving forward. It's all about positive momentum. It's all about meeting yourself where you are and being who you are, 
but going for your dreams for the first time potentially in your life. So if that sounds fun to you and interesting, it's not just the class, it's the community too. Some of the most amazing people I know are in this Heart Breathings community um, in the HB90 class. So definitely come join us. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, Publish and Thrive will also be opening up in July. Definitely put that on your list if you're thinking about joining us for Publish and Thrive later this year as well. And that's it. No book challenge accomplished. Another long video for you today, but I miss you guys so much. And I'll be back soon with my summer reset routine. All right. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.